topic that's up for discussion today. And then I grabbed another cup of coffee. You go through this, is this something that is just a normal human behavior? I'm not sure what area this is, what it would be called, but there are lots of dirt and gravel roads. Yeah, I mean, just what is this? <laughs> it's just like gravel roads in every direction. Hello, adventure seekers. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going from Ohio to Kentucky to West Virginia and back, and we're going to visit three lakes I've never seen. Climb aboard, let's go for a ride. We got some beautiful sunshine in the forecast. Let's hope that holds not quite as windy as yesterday. It was supposed to rain today, which is why my plan was to finally start editing video that I've been putting off for almost a month now. The weather's just been too nice. I have been riding like crazy. And I actually have not been recording everything. So although I do have quite a bit of stuff, you know, to work on over the winter, it's been nice just to go out and ride again and not have to worry about getting the right angle or just kind of like getting back to the basics it's always a nice reset i have many many times as a matter of fact this morning i talked myself out of it i was like you know what i don't even really know where i want to go i've just about seen everything i know of within a couple hours of me i need to edit video and then i grabbed another cup of coffee and sat down behind the computer in the map and i was like what if I just rode to Kentucky and like crossed the bridge somewhere and then rode to West Virginia and crossed the bridge somewhere? Nothing major off-road, just a nice fall ride. And then I figured out a place to cross down south of Portsmouth. And then I just started like kind of drawing a line south from there to get a little below the little dip in the Ohio River and go over to uh, West Virginia. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, what's this lake? I've never been there. And then when I got into the West Virginia side, I was like, hey, what's this lake? I've never been there. <laughs> and so all of a sudden I was like, oh, three states, three lakes. Let's do that. We're on the road and we're not sitting behind the computer editing video. We are headed on an adventure. So stay tuned. coming up into Pike Lake State Park, a true treasure in the area. Lots of uh, things to do around here. You know, this is the northern end of the Seoul Adventure Loop. So it's got a nice camping area. They got cabins, sweet little lake with the beach if you're hot. It is just a beautiful little, almost like a big pond, but and I know more of my frequent viewers have already seen this numerous times, but you just never know. Maybe this is your first time. If you're in the area, they got a disc golf course. They got tons of great, great hiking trails. You can rent paddle boats. You can rent kayaks. You can bring your own kayak. It's great fishing. Great campground. Great rangers. Great people. It's just great, all right? The trees are starting to show the beautiful colors. The topic that's up for discussion today, and I would love to hear some comments from all you guys. This is for the folks that turn a lot of miles every year 
I personally, the last couple of years, have done over 25,000 miles on the bikes. You know, I always have my big trips where I go, like this year I went to uh, South Dakota, which you may have already seen, and I still have yet to edit a uh, trip I took to up with my wife, um, 2,800 miles down through the Blue Ridge Parkway, blah, 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 all the stuff. Those trips are easy because they're easy to do because it's something new and it's something big. So for people that ride all the time, you know what I'm talking about when I say, sometimes all you want to do is ride. And then you get on the bike or you start to get on the bike and you're like, well, where am I going to go? I have seen everything within three hours of me 15 or 20 times. <laughs> no joke. So like, I just want to go have a cruise and then you get to cruising and you're like, oh man, this is, my head's not really in it. You know, it's sometimes it's hard. And, uh, I had that today. I almost talked myself out of riding. I thought about it all day yesterday. I prepped the bike last night. They called the rain off and I thought, man, last day off before I go back to work, it's a federal holiday. And I was just like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna ride. I got up this morning, got on the computer, trying to look like, ah, where should I go? Because if I do a short route and just start riding and turning and turning, I, I, I can do that, but it's not gonna be a full day. It's gonna be a short ride. I'm gonna end up turning and coming back go through this is this something that is just a normal human behavior I'm just curious who of you that puts a lot of miles on a bike every year and just struggle sometimes with wanting to ride real bad and then talking yourself out of it because you can't just come up with something new and exciting to do let me know onward we go Kentucky here we come Welcome to Kentucky, everybody. Let's go dig on some new roads. So most of these roads are this beautiful view there, are just this paved kind of chopped up pavement. Still cool. And a lot of them I haven't been to, although I have been up this road, but I've never shown it to you guys before that was one of those trips last year whenever I didn't record it. I just took a ride, which happens from time to time. Boy, that is a beautiful property. No through trucks, so this looks very promising. Right. Did we find a gravel road in Kentucky? This is the fun thing about just like getting on a map, sitting in my house and just clicking points and thinking, oh, I bet you that's a cool road. That's a cool road. I'm not gonna lie, most of the time it's just the road. But every now and then you end up on the elusive gravel road in Kentucky. State Resort Park. Never been here. Let's find out what's up. Hmm, there's an old furnace right there. Buffalo Iron Furnace. Major producer of iron in the Hanging Rock region, 1851 to 1875. An important Union Army supplier in Civil War. Built by H. Hollister in the raw stone stack. Originally was 36 and a half feet high with a steam-powered air blast employing about 150 men. It could produce 15 tons in 24 hours. Pig iron was shipped by steamboat on the Ohio River. All right, let's get a view of what this lake's got. Looks like 
they got a nice little dock and picnic table just for me. Greenbow Lake is a 181-acre reservoir nestled in the Appalachian foothills of Greenup County, Kentucky. The lake was jointly created in 1955 by a group of residents and the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. Its name derives from the combination of names of the county it is located in and nearby Boyd County. The park offers many amenities including camping, fishing, boating, dining, golf, as well as scenic trails and biking and hiking over more than 3,000 acres. So the next time you're in Greenup County, Kentucky, be sure to visit Greenbow Lake. Well, I couldn't get a whole lot of Greenbow Lake because it's just like ravines flooded you know dammed up and then back flooded so with the drone restrictions at 400 feet i can't get high enough and keep a signal so we got a little piece of it state one down state two in the books lake one in the books we're headed to state three and lake two and then back to state one and lake three <laughs> i got that all right <laughs> We made it to Ashland, Kentucky, and we are just about through this northeast corner of Kentucky. And we are headed to West Virginia. Welcome to West Virginia. Beach Fork Lake. Lake number two on the day. Like we're going right across the levee. Beach Fork Lake is a 720-acre reservoir located near Lavalette in Wayne County, West Virginia. This 3,144-acre park offers hundreds of campsites, miles of hiking trails, and plenty of lake activities for the whole family to enjoy. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers created Beach Fork Lake in the 1970s by damming the Beach and Miller Forks of 12 Pole Creek near Lavalette. This was done to control the flooding and provide recreational opportunities and wildlife management in the area. So when you visit Beach Fork Lake, be sure to bring your disc golf disc as there is a championship level disc golf course as well as a nine hole beginner course. All right, we have made it past the second lake. We are in the third state and we are headed back north on Dunkel Branch Road. Pretty sweet little back road. That's a sharp turn.
turkeys. Bunch of turkeys. Oh, yeah, beautiful. I'm just driving around Huntington trying to avoid detours and stop traffic. <laughs> Well, after a couple times around the block, <laughs> I think I've got it figured out. Welcome back to Ohio. Three states complete. Never been on this 217 before, and it is a fun curvy road now. You gotta keep your head up, or you will be in the ditch. Dig it. And now that we're about an hour and a half, two hours away from home, it's kind of nice to get on some gravel. Looks like it rained here, too. <laughs> I'm not sure what area this is, what it would be called, but there are lots of dirt and gravel roads everywhere you look and it feels almost like like Wayne National but I uh, just not I'm in between it I'm in between Marietta and Ironton so it's not that who knows pretty cool I've never been on this road whatever it is I have to put it up on the screen good droning road if you're into that sort of thing. I believe this might be part of the Trans-Ohio Trail because there was a section where I was making my route back and I was like, oh look, it, that takes me right where I want to go and I just kind of followed it. Yeah, I mean, just what is this? <laughs> it's just like gravel roads in every direction. This is kind of like a uh, what the whole day was all about maybe. Just finding an area where you come down here and make a 100 mile gravel loop somewhere. That'd be sweet. But yeah, mental note, that part of the state has a lot of gravel and dirt roads. Yeah, just look at that. <laughs> that road looks so killer. I could go that way and go around this lake, but I won't get to see any of it. Timber Ridge Lake. This is a new one for me. I live in Ohio and I have not ever laid eyes on this lake. Oh yeah. Timbre Ridge Lake was constructed by a private entrepreneur in the 1970s, hoping to develop a resort location. Those plans never materialized and the lake was acquired by the U.S. Forest Service, Wayne National Forest, in 1991. This beautiful 100-acre lake is located in Lawrence County, Ohio. While the lake is meant for all to enjoy, please respect the private property during your visit. There are a few small private lots near the dam on the north side of the lake. I think you would be hard pressed to find a more secluded and private setting. Timber Ridge Lake is killer. I am bringing my kayak back here. I flew the drone like 2,500 feet away from me, which is almost half a mile. I could still see like it just kept going down that valley. Just looks amazing for some kayaking, even more in depth 
exploring. Well, it has been a heck of a great trip, especially since I almost didn't do it. It's kind of a meditative little circle through three states and three lakes. We're still a good piece from home. We're about close to two hours, I'd say. So it's going to be pushing dark. It'll be twilight anyway when I get there. This does not feel like a road. If this is a road, I need to mark this because this is like backpack road, Ohio. What in the world? I, I always say I've seen everything within three hours of my house, but then you just kind of run up on something and voila. Southeastern Ohio is pretty special. Well, with the sun setting low, I've decided to freeway it uh, up to Chillicothe and take the outer belt over to 50. And I sure hope you guys enjoyed this ride. Until next time. I hope you're planning getting your vacation started and getting out there on your own local route adventure. Until next time, peace. That's a wrap.